Hello everyone, Nick here. So this is the fourth part of the creation of Sega. Now it's all about composition. I actually skipped the part where I created the materials in Cinema 4D because I already had them. So it was all materials from previous projects and I just, just did some minor tweaking here and there. So I rendered out a couple of passes and now we will blend them all together in Photoshop to create the final image. So let's jump right into it. So I already imported all the images and named them. So we have a gray layer, then a black, a white, a gold, and then some layer with like a crazy lighting setup for like getting some nice shadows in the end. So what I did at first here is like tweak the gold a little bit because it was like too yellowish for my taste. So I'm just tweaking the, the colors here on the gold till I have something that I, that I like. Yeah, just put in some blue and some red and then kind of liked where it was headed. And now I'm thinking about if I should start with a gray or if I actually start with a black. And I think I decide to just start with the black as a base color and then use the gray and the white to add some detail. So now I just create masks for all the layers and invert them. And then I will be able to paint in those masks just with black and white. And this way I uh, can decide where the material will show. So now I'm painting like the gray layer and apply this gray material where I want it. So I really like this part. It feels like meditation, you know, at this part, like all the work is done. <laughs> now we just have to decide on where to put what. And it's, it's very relaxing. And I also kind of knew what I wanted. So there's not like, you, you won't see me changing the color composition a lot. Because I know what I wanted and I didn't want to spend like too much time on it. For like several reasons, but I explained that in, in video one, I guess. <laughs> But of course, this is a very like, big advantage you have. You can do, or you can create a lot of different color combinations, variations here in Photoshop. I don't know, I could, you know, I could change the gold layer and do some copper or silver, just with some tweaking in saturation and color. So you can really leverage the layer system and the blending modes you have and, and, and all the filters you have in Photoshop to create different variations of the colors you've rendered. So imagine I would have rendered a, an orange color here. You know, I could change that orange to be like almost any other color. It will have like about the same value, but I can change it. And now I have like, I don't know, four different colors with only one rendered layer. And that's very powerful. So I can play a lot with that. Um, and that's also like really, really fun. But like I said, I, for my personal projects, I like to keep like a very tight schedule because I feel like if you, or at least for me, if I don't have that mindset of not spending like too much time on stuff, then I can easily like spend double the amount of time without like much of a progress. Okay, it will look a little better here and there, but it's just not worth it considering the time spent. I really like this workflow of putting in the colors this way. Of course, I could also use like the path tool or a selection tool to apply the different materials. And I, I tried that, but I, I feel like when I, when I do it, they, it, it seems so, so stiff. I don't know. I, I really like to have this little fall off 
and sometimes you don't want the material like exactly where it should be like from the object and stuff so i actually i enjoy it most it's just to paint it in with a brush because it's the reason it's so so easy is because of the mask setup i'm switching between black and white here all the time and, and you see that if you look like on, on the left hand side black and white changes all the time and i do that just with the button x to switch these colors so it's always like painting in some white for stuff to be seen and then painting in some black to make it go away again So I basically just need one brush. <laughs> and most of the time, like in one size, I just made it smaller here to be able to get into those little edges. But yeah, for me, that's just like so comfortable to work with. Another reason for that workflow is that a lot of tools I have here, or a lot of objects that seem to be separated are actually not because it's just like some parting lines I applied in in ZBrush or maybe like many objects also in cinema like belong together it's all one polygon group and it's not split up So I think it's just like very, very easy to do it this way. In ZBrush, there's actually like a renderer, especially that ZBrush works really well with, and that's Keyshot. And for Keyshot, you can like apply different polygroups and materials and then Keyshot is able to read them. That's also quite powerful. And I thought about getting Keyshot at some point, maybe at some point I will play with it because it's just like seems so effective to be able to use like some materials I applied in, in ZBrush as well. Because if, if you uh, remember and when I said, in, when I model in ZBrush, I think it's very, very nice to work with color more early. So you already have like a rough color setup or at least color ID setup. What I mean by that is that you already know that what kind of parts will have a different color or like the same color. So later on, when you drag a color in, 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 in Keyshot onto that material ID, all of the objects that have that polygroup or that material applied will get that color. And that's it's very nice to work with. So it's kind of the same with this workflow where I'm just painting it in. But the big advantage is, like I said, it's not only that, you also have like all the tools in Photoshop to tweak your layers, to blend them together. And of course, at any point you can also like start drawing over it. I think I haven't done it here. But it's quite easy to do because you already have all the colors and values and the, the, the lighting setup is done and everything. So doing a paint over at this stage is like quite easy, even though you're not maybe not that good at uh, illustration. And that's also part of the reason why I want to get better at uh, illustration or digital painting. Just so that I can I get the best out of both worlds, like 3D and, and 2D. They just work like so well together. And on that back part, I actually decided not to give it like a full white. I erased some of it again, just to have like a better gradient. It would have been like too strong. 
And I think that's another reason for that workflow is the art of the, the, the control you have. This is also like an example. See, if I would just pick white onto that part, white is like so bright here that even the shadows on that white are extremely bright. Now it's actually a little harder to paint that part here because I obviously <laughs> haven't spent like much time on it. So all these parting lines and stuff is like very, very rough. And the main reason is that this white is like way too strong, but I think I'll push it back later. Or maybe ch even change the opacity a little so it gets some of these details back of that, of that metal. Now I was kind of surprised that actually when I got too close to the background that even the background was lighter and I didn't know why because the background was just an image and it shouldn't be like brighter. From image to image. So I had to be careful on that outer edge of the armor. I think now I saw that this is not working. It's way too strong. In the face, it was okay, but not for the shoulders. So I'm playing with blending modes and see what I get. Also, maybe to get some of the details of the layer below. And I kind of figure out that the white looks good in the face, but it's just way too strong for the shoulder. So what I'm actually doing here is I alt click the mask. Now you see all these areas where I painted in white. And now we'll just add some gray to push the intensity back. And that allows me to have like a brighter face. And then just some of the contrast on the shoulders within the same layer. I could have split up the layer as well to have like different values of it, but I did it this way. Oh, now it's time for some gold. I really like the choice of gold here because I wanted to, and, and that's probably why the gold was very yellowish at first because I wanted to pick up the, the, the eye color as well. You know, when we were in, in, in cinema, I was always like, ah, you know, do I make the eyes blue? Will they become orange? What kind of color do I pick? And what I also had in mind is like, in, in, in general, what kind of color would be my, my color of choice for, for the design? I knew that I wanted to apply it on like other parts as well. But then gray, black, blue just seemed too boring. So I really like this uh, intense gold here. And now that we're zoomed in that much, you can actually see how messy <laughs> the eyebrows are. Especially if you compare it to the forehead, the forehead like that we remodeled in Cinema 4D and the eyebrows are done in ZBrush. And it has nothing to do with ZBrush, it's just that um, I'm not that good with the polishing tools yet. But I will work on that and 
then I will be able to, yeah, maybe have to retopologize less because the, my objects from ZBrush will be much cleaner. So this is like little tasks for, for the next stuff I'll do, whatever it will be. <laughs> but it's, it's all okay. I mean, I think the most important thing is that you, that you get it done. Because this is for me, this is, this is practice. This is having fun. This is, this is a learning process. And I think it's really, really important that those little artworks or whatever it is you do, if, if you, if you're drawing, it's the same thing, right? It's just to bring it like to an, to an end and decide that it's, that it's done. Because if you finish something, then, then you will have this, this sensation of accomplishment. And I think that's very, very important. Because imagine, imagine you draw or you sculpt like every day or every second day. And then at the end of the week, you can look back at what you did. And it's not just rough stuff here and there, all unfinished. No, you, you brought it like to a point where you were like happy with it. It's different for like a lot of rough sketches. That's not what I'm getting at here. I'm just saying that it's really nice to look at what you've done in a week and then be like proud of what you've achieved. Because I, I can say like, for me, it's, it's, it's really important to keep track and really acknowledge what you've done. Because oftentimes I just get like so caught up in all the stuff that I kind of forget how, how far I've come. I mean, there's still like so much to learn, but I think it's, it's just very, very important to not be too hard on yourself. <laughs> And I'm always trying to, to kind of work with that, you know, to, to keep track of what I do, to have this sense of accomplishment because it propels you forward. If you're, if you're happy with what you've done, then you will continue doing it. And that's how you get better quite fast because you actually do more. <laughs> I think that's a very, that's one of the most exciting parts about, about all this for me. So that's, uh, that's what I love about the journey. So now it's coming like together nicely here. <laughs> you see that here and there, I'll just try to paint some area and then I decide if I like it or not. And if not, just go back. Even thought about like getting rid of the upper lip again, but I really, really ended up liking it. So, like I said, the mo the the idea was basically done in my head, but it doesn't mean that I'm not trying anything. I even think that sometimes I'm like so into like certain things that I that I don't play around like enough. <laughs> So I should be more bold here and there and, and, and try out more stuff. Because especially when you're polishing something, right? Or when you're like, like what I, what I men mentioned in a, I think video two, like you can probably spend like a lot of time on polishing and refining and getting like the last 10, 20% out of something. But I feel like that you can get lost in this kind of process because when you, when you do that, you're like kind of an autopilot <laughs> and you don't pay attention or don't pay as much attention to what you're actually doing, like the choices you make. Uh, now you see, I'm actually using that layer I rendered with the intense lighting. And I really wanted to use it to push the values more. 
like to have like this bright light coming from the left top and having like a stronger shadow. And that's why I brought this in and then probably playing with screen or overlay and then some percentage values to get something nice out of it. See, I created a backup because I wanted to see, I, I changed the saturation on one of the images because the image itself had a lot of uh, yellow color in it, but I felt it was much more vibrant and added so much more to the image overall. So I, uh, I ended up using that one. So I do not remember <laughs> what I wanted to do here, <laughs> but maybe this, this is like this part of like playing around, seeing what you get, playing with different blending modes. I don't remember what kind of idea I had here, or what I wanted to pursue or try out. Kind of looks cool if it's all black and gold, but it's not what I was after here. Ah, I see. Okay. So, you know, when I, when I mentioned that it's quite easy to create like new materials inside of Photoshop, this is what I meant. I felt like this kind of piece of his armor, which is like maybe something like leather, you know, it's like a little softer. It has like soft edges and everything. And I wanted to have some darker color for that. So I played with different values and, and blending modes to get this kind of leather effect. And then I figured out that the edge on my, on my white, like for the shoulders was too hard. So I'm trying to fix that here. Now you can see it on the, on the, on the left side that I have this very weird edge there between the shoulder and the, like the black middle part. Yeah, now I'm trying to soften it out, but it looks weird. And I think that, that I got this kind of effect because I used the lasso tool. And now I have like different values. <laughs> I think it, uh, I think I was trying to figure out what's going on here and why I get this, this white edge. But I, I bet it was because of the lasso tool and I have to get into the mask itself. Yeah, now I figured it out that I have like this. Now you see it, and what I was talking about, I have like different values on that. And that's what was driving me crazy because I didn't realize it. Yeah, same on the other part. And now you can see how messy <laughs> the, the mask actually looks like. <laughs> and that's what I meant. Like the lasso tool is not always like the best thing because now you have like a lot of control where you want color and where not. And you can see that in the mask. It's really just where you wanted it to be. If you have like all separate parts, you can maybe render out some kind of material ID map. So you have different colors for each material or each object that you use. But like I said, for my objects, they're because of ZBrush, like I didn't split them in ZBrush, not much. So that was no option for me here. I think it's coming together nicely. <laughs> yeah, this is what I choose. Then I had a feeling that I needed some more gold, but that was not, I, I lost some contrast here with the background. 
you know? Was that the reason why I didn't keep it? I think I ended up not liking it. It was, was too much because the eye gets drawn there and I, and I don't want that. I want the eye to focus on his face and putting up gold up there created like too much attention. Yeah, getting rid of it again. <laughs> and before that, I was even trying just to push it back a little with like a different opacity for my brush. But then I decided to get rid of it completely. Now I'm using like the curves adjustment layer to kind of get an idea for my final color setup. So it's just me getting in there and playing with the curve for all of the colors. Then some levels for like better shadows, more darks. The lights are good, but the darks were like too bright. And then what I'll do is I put like my whole composition into a folder. Oh no, before I even do that, I do like a high pass. So I really like high pass to get some sharpness and I have a lot of control of where I get this sharpness because if you use a high pass with an overlay, you get like very, very crisp edges because the high pass itself creates this kind of uh, white and black values around your corners, around your edges. I think that's really, really cool. And then what you can do is just get in there and paint, I'll pick like the gray color and then like a soft brush and you can push back the areas where you do not want this sharpness. So again, because I want my focus on the face, I just want this additional sharpness on the face. And the effect would be like too strong on 100%, so I probably right, will turn it down. So now I turn all my layers on and that's the composition. Now it's all in one folder and I name it like comp and then I duplicate it and then merge it all into one layer. And what I can do now is let's give up the filters and give it some blur. So I'm kind of faking a depth of field effect here. And now I have like one blurred image and one normal image and, and then I just erase also with a soft brush, the area where I want the image to be sharp. And now I have like this little fall off to the edges. I really like that. I even tweak it a little more. Just turn the layer on and off to see if it's like the effect that I want. And yeah, this was like the finishing touches. So we're done. <laughs> uh, I, I really enjoyed this series and I hope you did as well. Thank you so much for following along. And if you have any questions left, just ask me in the comments and I'll definitely reply. I also want to thank all of you guys again for pushing me towards it because I just wanted to do a time lapse. But the votes on Instagram, they're very one-sided. So thanks again for making me do it. I really enjoyed this whole process and had a lot of fun. So thank you and see you around.